in this video, we're going to um, explore even more theorems that relate to angles in circles. Before we do that, though, we need some new vocab. So our first word is inscribed angle. That is an angle whose vertex lies on a circle and whose sides are chords of the circle. So in this diagram, my inscribed angle would be this angle here, T-O-M. Notice how this is different than a central angle. Um, we talked about central angles previously. That was an angle whose vertex was at the center of a circle. So that would be a central angle. Central angles and inscribed angles are not the same thing. Inscribed angles have their vertex on the side of a circle, not inside of it. And then the other word we need for today is intercepted arc. An intercepted arc is an arc that lies in the interior of an inscribed angle, and its endpoints will be on the angle. So an intercepted arc here would be arc TM. From that, we get the inscribed angle theorem. That just says that the measure of an inscribed angle is half the measure of its intercepted arc. And you can see that in this picture. My intercepted arc is 126 degrees. So my inscribed angle will be half of that or 63 degrees. And just a quick reminder, when we measure an arc, we're actually measuring the central angle that goes with that arc. So when I say that the measure of that orange arc is 126 degrees, I actually mean that the measure of this blue angle is 126 degrees. So yeah, I know that's kind of confusing. Um, and just keep in mind that inscribed angles and central angles have to eat the same arc in order for this theorem to be true. All right, let's apply it. So I've got some quick examples where I wanna find some measurements. First thing I wanna find is the measure of arc BC. I've got an inscribed angle that goes with that arc. So angle BAC would be my inscribed angle. Arc BC would be my intercepted arc. Your intercepted arc is always twice as big as the inscribed angle. So that would be 152, just 76 times 2. In the next one, I'm told that this arc measures 32 degrees, and I want to find the measure of angle A. Uh, my inscribed angle will always be half of my intercepted arc, so half of 32 is going to be 16. And then in the next one, I want to find the measure of angle JLM. J to L to M would be this angle. So I would like to find, if I can, the measure of the intercepted arc that goes with that angle. Well, if you look at all those lines crossing in the middle, I know that the measure of angle JPK is 88 degrees. Um, that forms a linear pair with angle MPJ. So I've took 180 and subtracted 88. I would get 92. So we know this angle is 92 degrees. 
Well, if the central angle there is 92 degrees, then I know the measure of this arc will also be 92 degrees. Um, now that I have an intercepted arc and an inscribed angle, I can use that one half relationship. 92 divided by two is 46. And on these types of problems, I find myself forgetting all the time which one is half as big and which one is twice as big. But I'm always able to remember just by drawing myself a picture. So if you just sketch out a quick circle and you draw in a central angle and then draw in an inscribed angle, you can look at the two of them and see well, the central angle is obviously bigger than the inscribed angle, so that one's the one that's going to be twice as big, or you can say the inscribed angle is going to be half as big. All right, then we've got the arc intercept postulate. This says if two inscribed angles intersect the same arc, then the angles are congruent. Or if two inscribed angles eat the same arc is what I usually say. So if you look at... This angle, it is eating this arc. The other angle is also eating that arc. So they're both 50 degrees. Same thing over here. This angle eats this arc. This angle eats the same arc. So both of those angles have to be 25 degrees. All right, let's find some measures. So first angle I want to find is angle K. So I'm going to look for an angle that eats the same arc as angle K. Well, angle K is eating this arc, JM. And it looks like angle L is also eating that arc. So angle L and angle K are congruent, the measure of angle K will be 28 degrees. The one on the right, I want to find the measure of angle B. Um, angle B is eating this arc, AD. So I want to find another angle that eats that same arc. Um, it looks like angle C does. So if I can find the measure of angle C, I'll know the measure of angle B as well. And I know this picture is getting a little bit messy, but it looks like that angle, angle C, is part of a triangle down here where one angle is 116 and the other angle is 32. So 180 minus 116 minus 32 is 32. So we know that the measure of angle C is 32, and therefore the measure of angle B is also 32. And then our last theorem for today says that a quadrilateral can only be inscribed in a circle if its opposite angles are supplementary. So in this picture, um, angle T and angle M are opposite angles. So angle T and angle M must be supplementary. So we'll say measure of angle T plus measure of angle M has to equal... 180 and angle O and angle H are opposite angles. So the measure of angle O plus the measure of angle H will also equal 180. And notice this is only true for quadrilaterals, so it only works for four sided shapes. All right, here's my first example. So I want to find X and Y. 
Uh, this looks like a trapezoid is inscribed in this circle. We know that our opposite angles have to be congruent, or sorry, not congruent, supplementary. So I know angle P and angle R have to add together to be 180 degrees. So X would be 39, and then to find Y, again, opposite angles must be supplementary, so angle Q and angle S should add together to be 180 degrees. So Y would be 29. And then I think I've got one more example. So in this figure, I want to find X and Y. Um, I know that my opposite angles have to be supplementary. So let's start off with X. Um, I know angle C and angle A should add up to be 180 degrees. Um, I don't have a measure for angle A, but it shouldn't be too hard to find because if you look at this angle, angle BAD, it's got an intercepted arc, arc BCD. So the measure of arc BCD would be 152 plus 80, that's 234, so the inscribed angle would be half of that, or 117. So I know the measure of angle A is 117. So we can use the fact that opposite angles should be supplementary. So I got X was 15.75. And then I'm going to do a really similar thing to solve for Y. So I know angle B and angle D are across from each other. So those two angles should be supplementary. I don't quite have a measure for angle B, but I can find it pretty easily. Um, angle A, B, C is an inscribed angle that pairs up with the intercepted arc ADC. So the measure of that arc would be 80 plus 84, that's 164. So that means the inscribed angle would be half of it or 82. So we know the measure of angle B is 82 degrees, then angle B plus angle D should equal 180 and y will be 14.